red pandas are a small mammal from Central and Eastern Asia, dwelling in coniferous forests as well as mixed temperate broadleaf forests intermixed with thickets of bamboo close to water. They have a very distinct appearance from many other animals with a slender cat-like body, white fox-like ears, an orange coat with black underbelly, legs and tail tip, with lighter orange rings running down the tail, and white markings on its cheeks, muzzle and eyebrows. The darker stripe seen between their cheek marking and their mouth is thought to prevent sunlight from interfering with their sight. The red panda is divided into two species, the Chinese red panda as seen here, with an orange face and white markings that lives in southwestern China and northern Myanmar, and then the Himalayan red panda, distinguished by its paler face and distribution of countries like northern India, Nepal and Bhutan, as well as parts of southern Tibet. Despite their name, the red panda is not related to the giant panda, which is in fact under Ursidae that contains all other bears. Recent studies have placed the family of Iluridae, which contains the two species of red panda, under the clade of Mustaloidea, which contains Mustelidae, that contains weasels, otters, badgers and wolverines, Prysionids like raccoons, kinkajous and kawatis, and Mephitidae, which contains skunks and stink badgers. Despite red pandas being discovered a whole 44 years before the giant panda, which was discovered in 1869, there are a few reasons as to how people would think of giant pandas and red pandas as very similar. The first, of course, is the name, panda, which is a Nepalese word which translates to the eater of bamboo. And, of course, both eat quite a lot of bamboo. Red pandas and giant pandas also have false thumbs, which are enlarged carpal bones that act as a method to provide extra grip of different objects, and particularly bamboo, allowing them to feed on it more efficiently. Though they are unrelated, it is an amazing case of convergent evolution within the overlapping distributions of these two species. So, red pandas are largely herbivores, feeding on bamboo, which makes up 98% of their diet. However, they have been sighted feeding on fruits, eggs, small mammals, and even birds. Bamboo, however, is not very nutritious which is why they eat the youngest, most energy-rich leaves. They are mostly active during the night and twilight hours, making them both a nocturnal and crepuscular species. During the night, if a cub is separated from its mother, the white facial markings appear brighter in their vision and allow a lost cub to find its mother successfully. However, they also exhibit a behaviour known as polyphasic sleeping, which involves the animal taking several rests over the course of 24 hours, which is like many species, rather than monophasic sleep, which is having one big sleep during the period of the day, such as humans, where we sleep for eight hours, give or take a night. When it gets cold, red pandas will also go into a state of hibernation, where they lower their metabolic demands and respiration, and with the stored energy of bamboo, sustaining them during this time. They are solitary, and can be highly territorial of others. Red pandas have been seen exhibiting a bizarre stance where they stand back on their hind legs and raise their tails and spread their arms out to the side before diving forwards towards their opponent. Their territories are not enormous, with females occupying areas below a kilometre square, with males ju going just beyond that. Male red pandas will mark more frequently and for longer than females, of which they do by leaving scents from urine, glands or faeces on the ground. They have at least seven recorded vocalizations consisting of growls, grunts, squeals, and barks that are made during fights. They will also hoot when encountering another individual. Then there are bleats and twitters that will be made while scent marking, sniffing, and during mating. As largely solitary animals, when another red panda sights another, they will often stare at one another from a distance. This habit of staring also assists in how cubs will find their mother, as it makes their white markings much more distinct. As arboreal species, red pandas spend a lot of their time in the trees. Their long bushy tails assist in balance and they are not prehensile. And like many cold climate animals like arctic foxes and snow leopards, the red panda's tail wraps around like a warm fluffy blanket on cold nights. The ankles of a red panda are extremely flexible. The fibula and tibia are attached in a way that allows them to be turned around their axis, which allows red pandas to climb down trees head first. The paws of a red panda are also very interesting. They lack the tough, fleshy padding of most mammal feet. Their soles instead have thick fur, which is believed to provide in extra insulation, as the feet often lose he heat much quicker than other parts of the body. 
and to help with extra grip on slippery, wet and mossy branches. Though their coloration may seem quite vibrant, the red and white cam camouflage the red panda possesses can camouflage with red mosses and white lichens that grow on the trees, and their black underbellies disguise their appearance from below. During the breeding season, which is between January and March, with cubs delivered between May and August, the males and females will interact often, feeding, resting and moving within the vicinity of their mate. A red panda male and female in the breeding season will often have multiple mates. This is what is known as polygamous, and this avoids much male-to-male -male conflict and competition over mates. The gestation period or pregnancy is around 131 days. Prior to birth, the mother will construct a nest out of sticks, leaves, bark, branches, leaves, grasses, and moss inside a selected den inside a tree hollow, log, stump, or rock crevice. They're, very, they're not very picky in this case. Litters will consist of one to four cubs that are fully furred, but like most mammals, are born blind, being entirely dependent on their mother for the first three to four months, and are fully grown within 12 then reaching sexual maturity at about a year and a half or 18 months. Red pandas face many threats other than the obvious predators such as snow leopards and other wildcats. Disease is another obvious threat with red pandas being susceptible to parasitic worms and protozoans. But the major threats to red pandas include the deforestation and fragmentation of their habitat, as well as poaching for their skins, fur and parts, with their tails often used in hats but are also sold in the illegal exotic animal pet trade. Though red pandas are undeniably cute, they should not be taken from the wild to be a pet, and they don't make great pets either, requiring very specific requirements to be sustained, even in just a zoo. So if you ever see a red panda in a market or being kept outside of its native range in an undisclosed location, report it to authorities. That is the best thing you can do. These threats have led to the red panda being classified as an endangered species under the IUCN, with an estimated 2,500 to 10,000 individuals remaining in the wild, all within protected areas across their range. But help is at hand, or help is at poor. The monitoring of populations through remote cameras and creation of reserves in red panda habitat is an effective way to protect both the red pandas and the habitat and bamboo they rely on. Lung Tung National Park in, to, in Nepal has also initiated an anti-poaching unit, and local communities are also monitoring the red pandas within the park. Community-based programs to reduce local dependence on natural resources and improve agricultural methods has assisted in protecting red panda habitat. In Bhutan, from 2016 to 19, an area of 35 hectares was restored and fenced in cooperation with local herders. In China, projects including Grain for Green, the National Forest Protection Project and National Wildlife Natural Reserve Construction Project aim to prote protect red pandas and other endangered species such as the golden snub-nosed monkey and the giant panda, of which they all overlap in range. Zoological parks around the world also partake in breeding programs, with red pandas being a common sight in many zoos, and successful breeding being a, a great success too, creating a viable insurance population for this species if the worst were to occur in the wild. If you would like to see more of different species of animals in these species profile videos, leave your thoughts and suggestions down in the comments below. And with so many species, I think this series of species profiles could keep going for a long while. If you enjoyed this video, do leave a like and subscribe for more as I really do appreciate it. And I just really wanted to get the red panda as our first, as it is of course the mascot of the channel and my personal favorite animal. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.